Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday, or if you're watching this on replay, whatever day of the week it might be. Today, we're gonna make craft journals. And we're gonna be making them out of these $1 composition books that you can get at Dollar Tree. You can get this kind of thing for under a couple dollars at any office supply place, at Walmart, Target, uh, you know, anywhere. And it doesn't necessarily have to be this style. It can be absolutely whatever style you want. But we've been doing a lot of fun crafts here at DIY Dreaming. And a lot of you guys recently have said that you're having a hard time keeping up, which I really don't want you to feel like you have to keep up with anything at all. I'm just giving you ideas. That's all. Anyway, so I thought let's make a craft journal, which I have done several times in the past and I've used them up, so I'm gonna use this that I'm making uh, for myself as well. So these are great for those 3 a.m. wake up in the middle of the night thinking about a craft that you want to do, and they're also great to have just while you're watching all the amazing crafters that are out there on the internet. Um, okay, so before I get started with that, say hi, let me know uh, where you're watching from, let me know if you have any questions, feel free to sprinkle, all that good stuff. We're gonna talk about everything from what kind of Mod Podge I like to what kind of books you can use or other papers. I'm gonna tell you about this, which you're probably wondering what in the world we're gonna be using scotch tape. Um, I have a bunch of things that we're gonna be using. So before I actually do that, I should have had this open, dang. I wanna just quickly drop or pin a link here. Let's see. I'm even going to show you how to cut out your paper. And it's based on the way I've done it in the past that was not great versus how I do it now that works great. Okay, so you're going to start out with a book, a, a song book, an old dictionary, a new Webster's Third International Dictionary. It could be uh, Reader's Digest, it could be some wrapping paper, it could be some craft paper, it could be magazine pages. I mean, it can seriously be absolutely anything you want. I have done so many projects out of this. Look how sad it looks now, but it do, it does, it's not sad. This was one of the books that my mamu gave me, and it was just locked away in a drawer. And so I've been bringing it out and enjoying it using it and I've used and given away a lot of pages from this. So we're not going to use this one today. We are going to use this one instead. Okay, and this was something I picked up at Goodwill uh, not too terribly long ago, uh, maybe I don't know, a month ago, a month and a half ago, and um, it was about three dollars. Look at this page. I almost cut this off. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. We're not using that today. But there's just beautiful graphics and things in here. So um, let me show you how I like to cut these. Let's see, where is my X-Acto knife? And um, yeah, I'll show you every single detail. Okay, so I have found the easiest way to get books out of, to get pages out of an old book is just to use an X-Acto knife and I'm just going to hold it down. We're just going to cut a few pages. And I think you guys can see okay. So be super careful if you're using an X-Acto knife because these things are really sharp. And in case you didn't know, I didn't know what this was called. This is something I picked up at my local Dollar Tree. It's called a whetstone. Thank you to everybody who told me what it was. You can get it wet and this wet, and you can use this to sharpen your X-Acto knife, scissors, and this was $1, and I've used it a lot. I've not gotten it wet, but it works just fine dry. So anyways, if you have a sharp X-Acto knife, you're less likely to cut yourself, just FYI. Okay, so I just did a couple of pages. And what we want for this project are pages that don't have a lot of 
uh, graphics and stuff on it. Okay, so I'm just going to pull these two pages out just for purposes of showing you. Okay, when you're doing Mod Podge, there is a lot of empty space around the edges. So the first thing I do is I, and I think that these look better when you have kind of wavy lines. So I'm just going to cut that sort of blank empty space off. And I'm just doing, I'll hang that, hold this up in just a second. I'm just doing kind of a wavy, um, can you see how that's wavy? I'm going to go all the way around. And we're going to cut this up even further. So, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be any specific anything. But it looks better to me to not have the, the pieces of paper that we're going to use be completely straight. Oh, no. I left the journal that I'd already started outside. I'm going to have to leave in just a second and run go get it. I have too many things on my mind today. <laughs> Looking around thinking, where is one that I've already completed to show them. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut three columns because this piece of paper has three columns. If it only had two columns, you could cut two columns. And I'm going to wave over back and forth over the line so that it's not so obvious when we use it. Uh, I'm just laughing at myself. I thought I was so good because I took my spray outside. Uh, I'm finding that with this kind of a project that if you spray it with a spray sealer before you go on to the next step, it seems to work better. So I have three of these. And then I would just stack them up and I'm gonna cut some big pieces And then I'm going to cut a few littler pieces. Okay, and this is the kind of thing you get. Can you guys see that? I'm further away today because I want to make sure that you guys can see my hands well. And these comments here, if they're bugging you, you should be able to swipe them either side to side or up and down and they should disappear. Okay, so before I came live, I did cut out a bunch of it to get us ready. Now, talk amongst yourselves for two seconds while I run outside and grab my composition book. for a minute and let's go to the very next step which is kind of weird but when I've made these journals before using these composition books sometimes I've gotten my pages glued together or glued to the front and that's not good so I found that the easiest thing to do is just to take some wax paper and you're gonna lay it in between the cover and the first page. Push it all the way up. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. And then, let me turn this over so you can see better. And then I'm just gonna tape it down. So the whole rest of my book is protected, basically. So how's everyone doing? I'm a little far away, so I can't see your comments super well, but I do wanna let you know that I read everything that you guys write. So if you have questions along the way, feel free to ask them. If you like this project or anything else that we do here at DIY Dreaming, 
feel free to sprinkle, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, this part does not have to be neat. There's absolutely no reason to worry about this part. We have just protected all of our book, all of our composition book, okay? And so now basically all we have is this. And like I said, it could be any color you want. It could be, um, they have some that are like hard paper that have little speckles on them. You could use that. This is just what I found when I was at my Dollar Tree. Okay, and then I personally prefer this matte Mod Podge. This came from probably Hobby Lobby or Walmart. You can get it everywhere. Um, but this is just what I like the best. And I like to work just out of a little paper bowl. You could use a glass bowl or a ceramic bowl or a plate if you want. So I'm just going to pour some of my Mod Podge in here. Oops, and all over my hand. Dang, I am such a messy crafter. Okay, let me get a wipe because my fingers are gonna stick to everything if I don't get this off. Craft Journal Supplies. I did pin a link right here and it, has, it says Craft Journal Supplies. We're gonna to get to that in just a few minutes. And then it has like a, a, a composition notebook, some paint and some scissors. Okay, so then I'm just gonna use one of these little foam brushes. And the first thing we're gonna do is just cover the bottom area. And you wanna be pretty liberal and pretty generous. And I'm just gonna go right up to the edge of the binding right here. We may go over it a little bit as we're going along, but we'll add glue onto that part when we need it. And if you don't have Mod Podge, you can Google, and there are lots of recipes for homemade Mod Podge. It's basically just white school glue and um, water. And Mod Podge can be kind of expensive, so if you can make it and you're happy with that, um, I'd say go for it. Okay, so this is what that looks like. All right. So then we're gonna just start taking pieces of paper and we're going to vary how they lay. This way, that way, upside down. And so I'm gonna put my first piece on right next to the edge. And um, I wanna show you two things. Okay, first of all, you can see that I did go over onto this binding just a little bit. Also, you can probably tell that it's below the bottom. That's okay. We're gonna cut off all the excess. So after you do that, you wanna just put a quick coat of Mod Podge over the top, especially around the edges, because we're gonna be layering and um, We're gonna be layering our paper and so it needs to stick. What you put down needs to stick to the one next to it. And as you're just getting started, it, it really doesn't matter that you be super neat or anything. Okay, so who has used Mod Podge before? I wanna hear from you if you have. Good to catch you live today. I'm so glad you did. Um, I apologize that my schedule is not more regular. Uh, oh, okay, here's what depends on how quickly I can go live any one day. It depends on how much time my project takes to prepare. Because I never come live to you guys and do a project for the very first time. I know some crafters do. But I always want to do it at least once on my own, practice it, figure out you know, what are the pros and cons, and make a sample for you guys to be able to see. So if that takes me a long time, then that is why I, um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't on earlier. Let me see, I'm looking for just the perfect piece of paper. What was that? 
Um, so, but I, I do try to come live sometime between like 9 or 10 and 5 or 5.30. And then I pretty much, um, I like, I've been sharing a lot of my most favorite videos from the past, the ones that people have been asking me questions about. I've been resharing those in the evenings and also first thing in the morning. But I pretty much don't, don't usually go live after uh, five o'clock or so because I am a morning person and my brain does not function well after about 5 p.m. So, anyways. Okay, so I'm just, you can see, this is so quick. And there's no right way to lay your pieces down. You're not going to notice anything like, oh, oh, that, those two were both going the same direction. You're not going to notice that once, um, once the whole thing's covered. And I have one sitting over here. They do kind of tend to warp a little bit, just so you know. And mine did. So I have it under a heavy book for a few minutes, and then I will. And also, I put mine outside to spray it, and then I left it, and it was in the sun. Oops. Can you see how quick this comes together? I mean, it's crazy fast. And all the pieces have like, they're, they're, they're rounded. Um, uh, they have rounded edges and stuff, and I just think they look better that way. So I've seen this done with sheet music. I've done it myself with sheet music. I've seen it done um, with like Reader's Digest pages or old books or even new books. And you can tea stain them uh, if you want before you use them. That's an option too. Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to show you the last thing that I usually do, which I, oops, that's two pieces which I think makes a pretty big difference in how it looks when it's dry. So I want to get all the way up to the top. And then I need to clean my hands off. So the first time I was trying to Mod Podge books onto a project, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that I needed to cut my pieces of paper super duper small. And you know what? It didn't look any better, but it took like five times longer. So don't do that. Don't think that you have to cut them super small. This, these two sizes are perfect. And if there was a specific spot where you really needed something to be smaller, you can always, you know, cut one piece a little bit smaller. But they really honestly don't need to be. So I was like, oh my word, this is taking forever. I'm never going to do this again. And then the next time I did it, of course, I did much bigger pieces. And I was like, wow, this is so much easier. Okay, so we need one little piece to cover this right here. That was two. Okay, so you probably have noticed that my hands are kind of um, sticky, <laughs> but they're gonna get worse. So then the last thing I would do is I'm gonna just kind of go over my whole project. I'm looking to see, are there any areas where there are huge puddles of my um, Mod Podge? And I don't see any right now. This is what it looks like. So now there may be some areas where your paper is kind of starting to bow or stand up a little bit. And the best thing to do for that is just to get some Mod Podge on your fingers and just rub it over and you can push any air bubbles or, or lumps or bumps right out. 
then we'll go over that with a brush at the very end. So I'm just going to do this the whole thing. Also, I can get those areas covered that didn't have any. Every, this dries so quick, you'll be so surprised. So I'm going to, um, you. this is one of these is going to become mine. Or I might make another one and give these away. I don't know. We'll see. Um, anyways, I need a new uh, craft project journal. So, okay, I've got something, a lump or something there. So I just smoothed it out pretty much. Now I'm just lifting off any big puddles. This, um, this matte Mod Podge dries pretty clear. It's not shiny. But if you have any areas where it's really thick, then it can look a little opaque in those spots. So that's why, let me clean my hands. That's why I do this. Um, why I push it down and then why I try to get any big puddles of Mod Podge up. Okay. Okay. This is a messy craft for sure. Alright. So, this is what we have right now. It's not super pretty right now, but it will be. So I'm gonna lay it aside, and I'm gonna pull out the one that I've been trying to press flat, and it worked just fine. You guys, look how great that looks. And that did not take me any more time than the one I just did. This one happened to be a blue composition book, but both of them were from uh, Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull my little wax paper sleeve off that I put on before, and I'm gonna show you a couple things. Okay, look at the back. You can see how all my pages are going over the edge. This is so easy to clean up. You can also see how it wants to bow a little bit, so you, you might wanna just work with it just a little bit to make it lay flat. So I'm just going to take some scissors. Let's see, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to hang on to this so that you guys can see. Okay, so I'm just going to trim. So if you're watching this live, it is Friday, March 5th. No, not March. Yeah, March 5th. What am I saying? 2021. And uh, anyways, I'm glad it's almost the weekend. Okay, so I just trimmed this long piece off. And if it wasn't exactly on the edge and it was going to be mine, I would not worry about coming back and trimming it neither. But if I was making this for someone else, I would want to get that all trimmed off. This is hard to reach. I get my okay. So let's do the bottom. There we go. That looks the right. I'm just gonna scrape off any little mod podge that might be hanging on on the edges, and this is what we have. Doesn't it look good? And it was $1. And then the pages were free. I had them. And then I already had the Mod Podge. Oh, there's a, one little area right here that looks like I'm going to need to come back when it's all dry and just put a little bit more in that corner and hold it down. Okay. So what I did when this was dry, I took it outside and I sprayed it with a coat of this. This is Rust-Oleum brand, um, two times ultra cover, matte clear sealer spray. 
you can use any brand. Um, it just, it makes it so the next step stays on the surface and doesn't like get fuzzy looking. Okay, so the next step is that we're, this is gonna be a crafting journal. So we, where is all my stuff? Oh, here they are. Um, this is gonna be a crafting journal. And so, Maker Studio, I put a link right here. It's on the second or third page of the stencils. They have this cute stencil set that says, I'd rather be, that's the name of it. And then there's these options, curbside shopping, fishing, gardening, and crafting. So, I'm gonna cut this apart so that I can um, use it how I want it. I would rather be crafting for sure. What would you rather be doing? So there's the crafting. This is the I'd rather be part, but this is gonna to be too long for our journal. So I'm gonna cut the B off and do the B in the center below the I'd rather. And then there's, and then this will be below it. And then there's um, this little part of that stencil that has paintbrushes and um, like a, a wax brush and a pair of scissors. Those will be super cute. Okay, and I was thinking there's a lot of different ways you could go with this. I'm gonna use Maker Studio Gel Art Ink, which comes in a tube, and it looks like this. And they have a lot of great different colors. I was initially thinking to just do it in black, but then I was thinking, let's do something bright. Okay, so it was between red and blue, and you guys, this is my favorite color of all the gel inks that they have. It's called Hey Y'all. It's this awesome turquoisey tealish blue that I love. Okay, so I'm gonna take my stencils off the back and they're labeled. And the gray ones do not need to be fuzzed. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. You don't need to make them less sticky. They're just fine right off the back, the backing. So I'm just laying these down. And the crafting one is a little bit long. It's got like a swirly before the start of the word and a swirly after. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want that to be. And this is what it's looking right now. Okay, and then, um, I'm gonna put this little darling thing here just below. Okay, so this is what it is going to look like. I'd rather be crafting. And this um, stencil is here. I pinned a link below that says craft journal supplies and it's either on the second or the third page of stencils. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna use one of their squeegees. I'm trying to think, is this gonna be too big? We'll use two of them. Um, we'll start with this one. And it comes a big size and you just cut it to whatever you want. And I usually round my corners. So I'm gonna put some of this gel art ink on here. And like anything else, you want to resist the temptation to go over and over and over your project. Just make a pass, and then you can peek to make sure it's going through the holes on your stencil. You can remove if there's a lot extra, but um, don't keep going over and over and over it, because you don't need to, and that just increases the chance that you're gonna mess it up. Okay, let's take a peek. Perfect! Oh my gosh, that's so cute. I swear using the, the this spray is what makes all the difference. It's not blurry or bleeding or anything. Okay, so let's do paintbrushes right here and the scissors. Your surface is going to be a little bumpy because it's all these layers of paper. Um, so your, your images may not be 100% perfect, 
but it's a craft journal, and crafting is not about perfection, right? That's what I'm always saying. Okay. So let's peek and see if we got everything here for this part. Oops, and I got it on my fingernail, and then I got it on here. Perfect! Okay, I'll, hang, I'll hold it up for you and just, well, I'll hold it up for you right now. I get a wipe, though, because I did smudge a little bit of, that comes off so easy. Look at it so far. Cute, huh? And super easy. And um, this, I've also made these as prayer journals, but they could be any kind of journal that you want, really. Really, any, any, any kind. And they take almost no time to make, and you can decorate them absolutely however you want. Um, so, and they start out with just a $1 uh, composition notebook from the Dollar Tree or you can get one at your grocery store or an office supply store for just a little bit more but um, they're just I just think they're nice I, I still like paper I know the next generation doesn't really ever use paper but I'm I'm still a list maker I still um, like to have things written down I use a paper catalog I don't know how to use that reminder thing on my phone I don't want to use that reminder thing on my phone. I just want to use paper. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Okay, I just need to do the beat and then I'll hold the whole thing up for you. You can see it takes hardly any ink whatsoever. So when Okay, when, do, when can you use this gel ink from Maker Studio? Um, you can use this gel ink on any porous or soft surface, like fabric. If you want to use it on fabric, and you want it's something you want to be able to wash, then you just heat set it with a hot iron. If you want to use it on paper or books or wood, it soaks in and there's nothing to do. Um, it's great. It's a great all around medium. Look how cute that is. Is that darling or what? Can you believe that we just whipped that out so quick? Um, yeah, it's a great medium to work with and it doesn't mess up your stencils at all. So, um, so I definitely recommend these and I did include these in the link below. They don't work on ceramics or glass. It, I mean, they, you can put something on those things, but the first time you wash it, it's gonna come off because those are not porous or soft surfaces. They're hard. Um, and just know that all of these have funny names, <laughs> like, hey, y'all. Uh, so when you go look, don't look for turquoise gel art ink. Be just looking at the colors and then noticing that they all have kind of funny names. Anyways. What do you guys think? Is it cute? All right, well, I think I am pretty much, oh, hey, I wanna show you something. Okay, I did this project the other day, and I am not super coordinated, but do you recognize this right here? That, these were my jeans that um, I stenciled the cuff. They're a little tight, I have the, I'm carrying the um, COVID-19 15 pounds right now. But um, anyways, I just had to wear them because I thought they turned out so cute. Oh my goodness, thank you guys for all the stars. I really appreciate that. Uh, so if you have questions, let me know. If you want to um, see the stuff I have coming up, let Facebook know that by doing this or this or saying something in the comments, and definitely let Facebook know that you want to see what I have going on by liking and following DIY Dreaming. And you can check up here somewhere. The three little dots should open it up, and you should be able to tell whether you've liked or followed it. Tomorrow is, um, I'm looking to see if my t-shirt's here. T 
Tomorrow is the um, craft-a-thon that I'll be participating in, so I'll get you guys information this afternoon. And I've been working on my t-shirt. Do you want just to have a quick little, little, little sneak peek? It's not finished, but it's turning out so cute. And I am gonna do a video on this, but I'm not sure when. Anyways, look, this is the front. Look how cute that is. And I did not sew it on. It's all hot glue. So these are the kind of, mostly the projects I do here are faith related. Um, I realize all this bunny stuff that you see here, <laughs> you know, and the eggs and that kind of stuff is not really faith or family related. Well, it is family related, but um, the majority of things I do here are quick. They're easy. You don't have to be a fabulous crafter or artistic. Um, they're super affordable, like these $1 composition notebooks. They're um, quick. I have a very short attention span. They're sometimes a little unusual. Um, and like I said, they're faith and family related. So if you want to see more of the stuff I have coming up, just make sure that you let Facebook know by doing this or this, saying something in the comments, or making sure that you've liked and followed this page. Alrighty, you guys, have a great afternoon. Um, watch for me because I have some news and stuff I'm going to be posting this afternoon as well as information about the Craftathon, which is Saturday, March 6, 2021. Alright, thanks for watching.